Okay, we have here a Weld Pro MIG and Stick. The specific model is the Weld Pro MIG 155 GSV. Um, so the other day I went to cut it on, and when I turned it on, I hear a pop. Smoke comes out. Uh, welder's toast. It won't do anything. So that meant that I need to further diagnose this. I took the covers off, and on the inside, I could see that the capacitors were blown. Um, the way I knew that they were blue was a there was fluid that had leaked all on the inside of the machine. That's where the smoke came from. Was that fluid um, being vaporized? It's a glycol mixture. Um, and so that being vaporized by the heat is what causes the smoke. Now another telltale sign is a busted cap. This is a capacitor. This is one of the ones that I took out. Um, you see the cap is popped on it. This is what they're talking about when someone says that they popped a capacitor. Um, some of them, when they start going bad, they're designed to do this to bulge out the top so that you know that it's bad. And that's where the electrolyte leaks out at. Uh, now this one has four capacitors. Two of them aren't for um, storing electricity though. Two of them are for distributing loads. Capacitors can be used in either way in this type of setting. So I knew these two were bad. They were ran side by side. So I changed them as a pair. It wouldn't be wise of me to only change one because you change one, it's going to blow out. And so the biggest thing about this is when you replace a capacitor, you need to find one that is of the same rating. Um, this one was 1200 microfarads. It was rated at 250 volts DC and it had a temperature uh, range of 85 degrees Celsius. Um, now height is not that big of an issue. If you can't find the same exact height, that's fine as long as the ratings are the same. Uh, what, is, what is really important is the diameter. Um, especially in something like this, you're, you're restrained to a small area. So the diameters have to be the same, and when you have a different diameter, your prong spacing right here is gonna be different. Um, so you have to get the right diameter. And also, you can get it, this one has an 85 degree temperature range. You can get a 105 degree Celsius temperature range. That just means that uh, it, it, it has a higher rating. The higher the number on the temperature, the higher the rating. When I bought mine, you can see that the height is different, but the diameter is the same. Also, the microfarad rating is the same. Uh, the voltage rating is the same but the temperature rating is higher, so 105 degrees Celsius. So, I know that it is good because the diameter is gonna fit in there. Capacitors do have a positive and a negative. You'll see usually the negatives are marked. They're marked either with a stripe or they have cross hatching or something like that on the negative prong. This one has both. It has a stripe here showing that that is negative and also has a cross hatch on the negative prong. The ones that I took out were the same way. It's got a stripe here that's the negative and it also has a cross hatching on the prong and it even tells us here at the top negative is the cross hatched prong. If you have a Weld Pro MIG 155 GSV and your capacitors have went out like mine, you can buy these from my eBay which will be in the description of the video so that you can replace your own capacitors and not have to buy a whole new welding machine. Okay, so now we're gonna use our soldering iron to heat up the solder, and I'm using these pliers to push the capacitor through. And then we're gonna wiggle that capacitor out on the other side, I'm using these pliers to kinda of break everything free. And here are the capacitors out. We're gonna be putting our capacitors in uh, on this spot right here and here that's where they're going to go and we marked where the way our old capacitors set you see they have it has a negative and a positive we soldering them back in right here and right here is where we're going to be resoldering all right so we've got our negative which way we need it to go which our negative is supposed to go at the top 
and we're going to drop this down in there and it should fit up in these little holes right here and poke through all right so now we got our capacitor in there we're going to take a little wooden block we're going to set it in here on top of this so that when we flip it over it's going to hold our capacitor in place where we can add some solder to it and now we're just going to be heating up the solder that's on there and we're going to be adding some more lead solder to it you can see that it smokes i wouldn't breathe this stuff i'd wear the proper ppe we're going to do the same thing with our next one we're going to fit it into our hole here we're going to wiggle it around until it decides that it wants to drop into its hole once we get it in the hole we'll push it in real good make sure it's seated we'll take our handy dandy block we're going to put it on here again so that way when we flip it over it's got something hard to sit on once again on this second capacitor we're going to heat up the old lead start adding some new lead to solder these capacitors in where they'll stay all right so we have our welder fixed now we put in the new capacitors um, we're going to cut it on and we're going to hook up our ground and we're going to try a test weld to make sure that uh, everything works right now that we have our capacitors in. We've confirmed that it works. That was just a little test. Our new capacitors are good. And so now you can take this knowledge and go replace your own capacitors. Thank you for tuning in.